With that being said, happy to get things started off with Alabama a and head coach Richards. Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. Coach, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us. We know this is an extremely uh, busy time of year for you as you get your team prepared for the upcoming season. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement about the 2022-2023 edition of the Alabama a and Lady Bulldogs. <clears throat> Well, uh, good afternoon. I hope everybody, everyone is doing well uh, this afternoon. Uh, this year is going to be different for us. We have a, basically a new squad. Uh, we have, you know, about four freshmen, a couple of sophomores, some juniors, some transfer kids, and two grad transfers. Um, I think we're going to be, you know, athletic. Uh, we're working hard. I'm excited about this group. We're young. We're energetic. Uh, we'll have some leadership when I, when I grad transfer. So I'm excited to see what this group has to offer. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. Coach, if you could, please, let's take a little bit of a deeper, deeper dive into your roster. If you could kind of keep us um, updated and, and provide some information as far as your uh, incoming players, uh, newcomers, as well as some of your key returning players. Um, well, of course, I, I have a lot of new players. So um, I, I'll just start off with the returning players. I returned um, Darian Bergen. Uh, she started for us for two years. So she will be returning with a lot of experience, you know, in the SWAC. So we are excited about that. You know, one of our junior combo guards, you know, also um, McCambria Shakespeare. She's a 6'4" um sophomore you know had some injuries you know due to you know her foot and uh last year with some COVID issues so she wasn't able to help out as much but she has a lot of potential and we are excited to finally have her back and healthy and you know to see what she'll be able to do for us this year you know as far as our um newcomers like I said it's a lot of them but I'm just going to highlight you know um, like four of my freshmen, I have two um, two guards and two post players, and we're, we're excited about them. And, um, you know, one of them is a PG, PG guard, and um, the other one is a combo, imagines a PG from uh, Kansas, and we're excited about her. And Jalen Mary, you know, extremely high IQ from Indianapolis, uh, another, uh, she's a combo guard, so we're excited to see what she'd be able to bring to us. Uh, with that at that position and the two forwards both from Cleveland Ohio I'm excited to see uh, what we do since we are inside out team and they are working hard and just you know fitting right in right now and I'd like to transfer to my transfer transfer student athletes uh, we have Chanel Mitchell uh, another forward from um, Blinn Community College um, where she won a championship so she know what winning feels like and she's won the two years she was at Blinn we also have a transfer forward from uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Akia Elam, um, physical, strong, you know, presence in the post as well, since we lost, we lost a lot in that area. Uh, we also have J Jayla Cody uh, transfer from Central Arkansas. I'm excited about her with her experience at the Division One level and knowing what, what, is, what it looked like to compete at this level as well. Uh, we also have two transfer uh, guards, both of them are scoring guards, um, so um, they will be able to fit with our motion offense. Uh, Shanice, Miss um, Shanice and Miss Amaya, I'm excited about um, both of those young ladies. Uh, like I said, two transfer guards and love to score the ball, so we, we're just trying to get them adjusted and being able to be a great complementary piece to our motion offense. Um, and uh, I'll just go to my two transfer uh, fifth-year kids. You know, we have Destoni Grace and Amani Free. Amani uh, played at Quinnipiac, and uh, she's won a championship, so she know what that looked like at the Division One level. She competed at the highest level uh, with the competition. So I'm excited to, with her leadership and some different things that she'll be able to offer to our younger kids and to these programs, you know, to help us get in the race of winning a SWAC championship. So much for that inside, Coach. We're going to open it up for questions for Coach. First question goes to Mia Berry with ESPN Zanscape. Hi, Coach. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? 
um, great as well. You mentioned a lot of new players, a lot of new faces. Can you talk a little bit about the buy-in process of getting these girls ready and accustomed to playing in your system? How has that been so far for you? It's, it's been good. It's been good, but you're right. I've been having to do a lot of things differently. You know, I've been extremely patient because when you have a lot of new faces, you have to be patient, you know, with this and just trying to get the t- chemistry together and seeing how they will fit my system. So we've, we've been um, doing a lot of individual work, a lot of breakdown work, and we've also been watching a lot of film just so we can learn and we can look and we can listen. Them are my three L's that I love to incorporate uh, with my team. So we've been doing a lot of that, individual work, um, film work, and just me meeting with them and just trying to help them navigate through this process of being new and just fitting with my expectations in this new system. Uh, follow up to that, uh, players are also new to the SWAC. What are some things that you're really hitting hard, letting these girls know, yes, I've known you won at other places, but SWAC basketball is a little bit different. What if, What are you emphasizing to get them ready for SWAC play? Oh, there's no excuses. You have to be tough. You have to be ready to play. You have to be physical. You have to be aggressive. Um, and, you know, again, no excuses. That's all I had. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach, when you look at your non-conference schedule, uh, talk a little bit about that, specifically some of the teams you're playing and also just your scheduling philosophy in it in, as a whole. Um, well, uh, we have three SEC teams. I'm, I'm going to start off with, with those heavy hitters. You know, we have Alabama first game of the season and they're, you know, respected uh, SEC team. So um, I'm excited about that because I want our girls to get that experience. You know, as, as mentioned previously, the SWAC is a very competitive conference. We are everybody, you know, some, a lot of uh, well-respected good coaches that's getting a lot of, lot of good talent and talented players. So I want to um, make my schedule as competitive as possible. So we have Ole Miss. Uh, like I said, we open up with Alabama. We have Ole Miss. Uh, and we also have Vanderbilt. And they kind of spread it out, you know, uh, have Ole Miss at the end of the month in, of no- November. And then we um, end off with, in December with uh, Vanderbilt. And, you know, we also have some games that we have to return that will be good for us. Uh, we know we play, you know, Mary State, you know, they they beat up on us pretty bad last year. So I'm excited about that rematch uh, with the, with these young ladies. And that, you know, coach does an excellent job with that, you know, with a program and, you know, excited to be able to, you know, play them again. And we also have Sanford, you know, um, in, in state. We have North Alabama, which is great. I love to, you know, kind of play the teams in state. Um, that's really good for us. Next question, Charles Bishop. Excuse me? Next question goes to Charles Bishop. Okay. How are you doing, Coach? I'm great. You? I I wanted to ask this question. Uh, Thank you uh, for asking. Um, uh, Does each season uh, sort of take on uh, an acclimation process when you're talking about uh, bringing in new uh, new faces? Uh, This... Uh, each year, I guess, uh, does it change in terms of how everybody adjusts to the coaching style and style of play in the sweat? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it, it is it's totally different. You know, last year I had a lot of veterans. They kind of knew the system. You know, we did have a lot of transfers, but it is different when I have more veterans where they can able, they, they are able to step out and kind of lead and kind of get everybody on board. But this year, I knew it was going to be different for me in the spring, so I was already brainstorming about, you know, I'm losing a lot of, um, you know, my veterans from the previous season, so we're going to have to do things a little differently, so my whole summer was set up differently, uh, and as I mentioned previously, we, we have to, you know, we're doing more film and, you know, more individual work because I want each and every uh, individual player to get the attention they need so they can be successful as they need to be. And with everybody learns at a different level. So when you do accumulate these freshmen transfers from other programs and other cultures, you have to be patient and have a master plan to put all the pieces together so everyone can be successful and everybody can be on one accord. Good thing. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach, I know we're uh, inching towards the uh, end of your availability, but if we could just get a few more questions in with you. Uh, We'll take another question from Mia Berry. 
Hi, Coach. It's me again. You kind of touched on it a little bit. How do you? How are you able to find that perfect balance between getting some freshmen, uh, growing players within your own program, as well as accepting transfers? What's your process on that? And how do you kind of? You talked a little bit about the process of getting them to jail, but how do you approach that each season? Um, you know, again, with the with the transfer portal, it's so hard, and it's so hard if players don't have the experiences that they they want. But it, it is important for me. I love to recruit freshmen as much as people and everyone and even myself, you know, like to get transferred so they can help you immediately. I, I, I embrace the, the beauty of recruiting a freshman and molding them to be a part of my program and kind of, you know, sell off and leave the way. It's just the beauty of the, the inner coaching in me to help mold a player and pay, pay it forward. So um, I always try to balance it out in you know, get a couple of freshmen on a roster, eat, you know, and not just build my whole team with, with transfers and just hopefully try to ha help them have a great experience so they can stay and help kind of continue to lead the program in that aspect and then sprinkle it with, you know, some transfer kids and, you know, so we can have a good mixture of both. That's kind of my, you know, my, my target when I'm recruiting. Okay. Thank you, coach. I look forward to covering you this season. Thank you. Coach, we're, we're about one minute over time, but we would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the new venue that you all be playing <laughs> the new arena. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm excited. It's a state of state of art uh, facility, and I, I'm so excited for the young ladies. Now, Elmore will be missed, but I think the you know the young ladies are excited for that to have that type of facility, and it's going to help out tremendously with recruiting. It's a beautiful, beautiful. Um, place and I'm excited to you know play our play our games there this season um and just looking forward to the great atmosphere here at Alabama a &M. Coach Richards it's a pleasure speaking with you and good luck this season. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go Bulldogs. Next up we're going to go to Montgomery Alabama we're going to talk to Alabama State Head Coach Frida Freeman Jackson. I do see that we have coach on the Zoom call with us so we're going to ask her to start her video. Okay. Hey. hey, good afternoon, coach. How are you? I'm doing fine. How you doing? Doing great, coach. Thank you so much for, for asking. And thank you so much for taking some time to join us. We know this is an extremely uh, busy time of year as you get your team prepared for the season. Uh, with that being said, coach, start us out with an opening statement about the 2022-2023 edition of the Alabama State Lady Hornets. Yes, this year, just like um, in, I guess, about three or four years ago when Ayani and Jayla and Shamaya and I had several other uh, freshmen coming in, uh, we have eight freshmen this coming year. So we have our work cut out for us. Uh, the girls are trying to get it. Uh, we start our first practice on today, but we also have two three junior uh, college transfers with addition to those freshmen. So now you're talking about we got 11 new players. So you know it's been a task trying to get them girls up to speed and trying to continue our winning uh, ways. But um, it's enjoying, but at the same time, you know, it's frustrating for the young ladies because we giving them a lot at a, in a short period of time. But I think we have enough of them uh, out of the eight that we will probably possibly be able to depend on three or four of them. So um, it's going to be a, a different, you know, uh, look for us with all these new players and only returning five uh, players off of last year's team. Take those opening comments, Coach. We're now going to open up for questions. First question goes to Charles Hallman. Good afternoon, Coach. Can you hear me? Yes, how you okay. good afternoon. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, Charles Holman, Minnesota Spokesman Recorder. I have two quick questions, hopefully, that you can answer. One is about the announcement yesterday for the Pac 12 of H SWAC uh, Legacy Series involving both men and women's basketball. If you could speak on that. And secondly, I understand it. If I don't know you recall, you're the dean of the SWAC because you've been in this in the league for a little longer than. Than, than people might want to recognize you don't look at like you've been there that long, but you have. 
So if you could speak on those two things, I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, thank you. As um, far as the uh, SWAC and the um, PAC, um, is it PAC 10, PAC 12 uh, schools right. or what have you? Uh, that is a great exposure for us and also for them to be really interested in HBCUs and the impact that we have on student athletes is extremely uh, great. And anytime you can bring any of those type of schools to your campus, that's going to be a great selling point for our fan, our fan base. So I think it's great all the way around. And what was the other question? Uh, just how have you seen the, the SWAC improve, evolved over your years of being in, being in a conference? Yes, the SWAC always had great players. Uh, this past year was one of the most productive years we've had in a long while as it relates to scoring. Uh, talking about girls average at 18, 20 points or what have you. But when I first got into the SWAC and when I played, girls was averaging 20, 22, 23, or 24. So the scoring aspect has really, really uh, increased on last year. But we've always had great uh, players. And, uh, and I feel that we are going in the right direction uh, as it relates to the SWAC. You're talking about adding Florida a and as well as Bethune-Cookman. And with the schools we've already have in the SWAC and the coaches with their knowledge and their expertise, I think we are really, really headed in the right uh, direction. And I'm really excited about being a part of the SWAC. Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck this season. Thank you. Next question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Good. You mentioned, you know, a lot of the new players. Can you talk a little bit about the leadership of the five returning with Jayla, Amani, and Shamaya and what they've brought to help bring these girls up to speed? Yes, I am really impressed with how they understand that if they don't have leadership, we're doomed. And they have really picked it up, picked it up. And the thing that I'm excited about is Jayla and Ayana understand that they have to coexist. It's been friction in a sense, far as who's the best guard, you know, got both of them really are two guards, but we play them into two and three. So it's been a competitiveness with them throughout their tenure here at Alabama State. And they finally get it that we need both of you all for us to be successful. But the leadership is, is, is crucial to our success on this year. And then also, uh, Dekaya, uh, Sandra, she's stepping up her leadership abil ability. She's our point guard, and uh, she has really been doing a great job as far as uh, leading the program. Quick follow-up to that. A season ago, this team made it to that SWAT championship finals. What do you think it's going to take for this group to come together and also go back? Okay, we have to be totally bought in, not just get ready and uh, get really excited as far as uh, – the tournament and defense is going to have to be our bread and butter and all the teams, all the coaches that uh, understands my program, they know that we try to be the best as far as on the defensive end, but uh, the last three or four years, that's been our weakness as far as a uh, defense and we trying to figure out a way to be able to sell them on the defensive end, but they realizing that if they don't play defense and if they don't enjoy the aspect of playing defense, it's going to be tough to uh, win a championship in this league. Thank you, coach. Appreciate you. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. How you doing, coach? I'm doing fine. How you doing, Charles? A uh, quick question, uh, and it's in regards to uh, the leadership, uh, but is there a go-to person uh, going into this season that you want the ball in their hands in the final minutes of the game? Well, we got three go-tos, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I think uh, Ayana Emmanuel, as uh, far as the guard, she has really stepped it up and she understands um, both of them because you're talking about three girls that they fit for your players. So it doesn't matter which one of them girls actually uh, get it done at the end. But Shamaya Ward, uh, she is a beast in the paint. And it depends on the circumstance. If we need uh, uh, two points to win a game or if we need a three. So we have a lot of uh, girls that can actually put the ball in the uh, basket because those three ladies are our uh, three leading scores coming off our, these last three years, really. Mm -hmm. That's your thing. I appreciate that, Coach. Mm -hmm. Got about one more minute in Coach and Jackson's availability. Taking any final questions for Coach. 
All right, we'll take a question from Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. You talked. You mentioned the buy-in. For you as a coach, what does a buy-in look like from your girls? A buy-in looks like doing the right things on and off the floor, not being uh, having to try to persuade them to work hard and practice and them understanding that in order to be prepared for a game, you got to work hard and practice and do the things, do extra things, come to the gym, get up extra free throws, get up shots or what have you. And um, that's part of uh, what I feel. I, I, I feel that it's part of being bought in to the program. And you know, if a team is bought in, because I've had several, I've been, this is going into my 25th year. So you know what it looked like at like, and, uh, and what it play like. So um, I think this group right here, because I've had a, some conversation with my older girls, they, and, and, and uh, it took me because uh, some of the older girls, like they, they really, really listening. They, they, they really want to do what you say. So I was saying in my mind, so you all really didn't want to do what I asked you all to do. So this team right here, I feel they are bought in. Thank you, coach. Appreciate you. Have a great rest of today. And I look forward to covering you this season. All right. Thank you. Coach, uh, we sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this season. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we go to Alcorn State at Coach Nate Gilbert. I do see that we have Coach on with us. We'll get Coach's video going here. All right. Good afternoon, Coach. How's everything going? Doing great, Coach. Thank you so much for asking, and thank you so much for taking some time to join us, Coach. We know it's an extremely busy time of year for you. Uh, with that being said, Coach, start us out with an opening statement about the 2022-2023 edition of the Alcorn State Lady Braves. Well, first of all, I'd like to say uh, thank you guys for having me today, and uh, I'm excited about uh, this group of young ladies. Uh, I found out one thing about uh, this group uh, when it comes to conditioning and and getting ready for practice, uh, good players make uh, players that are not so good better because competition is good. And I, I, I see that right now. I see it in our old kids that they came back in a, in a lot better shape. I see it in our new kids because I, they got their eyes on the prize to me. And uh, the competition has been real good. Uh, I can see our team uh, improving in every phase of the game simply because the talent is better. And uh, I think good talent make, make players uh, who not as talented. I think it makes them better, but now, because everybody's fighting for a position. So uh, we're a very interesting team. I'm looking forward to learning more about our team. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We're now going to open up for questions for Coach Kilbert. Once again, if you do have any questions, please utilize your raise your hand feature to get your question in the queue for Coach. First question goes to Mia Barry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. That's good to hear. You talked about the competitive balance. Can you, how would you rate this roster? You know, I know it's very early. How would you rate them right now as opposed to maybe the roster you had last year? What are, and what are some of the strengths of this group? Uh, well, that's, that's a very good question. I, I can tell you right now, it's, it's night and day, uh, simply because uh, we're so, we're so athletic uh, when it comes to, we have so many kids that can play more than one position. We have, we have about four or five kids that can play the two to three the four. And so as a coach, that gives you a lot of room to be able to do a lot more things when it comes to how you want to play kids. And uh, it just makes us uh, hard to match up with it in certain areas. We can do a lot more offensively and defensively. Uh, uh, we're just going to be a hard team to deal with when it comes to our athleticism. And last year, we did not have that. We did not have depth at, at, at all positions. Now, I think we are too deep. Uh, at, at just about every position, which makes us, uh, I think that in the long run, we're going to be a real good basketball team. You know, we got a long ways to go when it, to go when it, when you're talking about dealing with uh, chemistry and all that different stuff. But uh, by the time I think our conference come around after playing the preseason games that we're going to play, I think we're going to be well prepared for uh, uh, conference play. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. How you doing, coach? Uh, doing pretty good, pretty good. What uh, about yourself? Uh, doing well. In terms of analyzing your roster, um, I wanted to ask, uh, what do you think is the, the main thing uh, this season in terms of moving into the upper echelon of, of conference? 
Well, our main thing to me, where well, I thought our problem was last year, you know, was depth. We didn't have a lot of personnel when it comes to our ability to be able to sub people in and, and continue whatever process was going on, with it, whether we was playing good or bad, and someone coming off the bench to be able to raise that level. I feel like now we, we, we have that. When I talked about having uh, kids at every position, we got at least two good players. Uh, but the difference is we, we, we're, a little, we're a little bigger now. Uh, I think we could compete uh, more with teams that have uh, size. We have size now. And I think that um, our twos and threes are a lot taller. We, we're not as tall as we would like to be at the point guard position, but we're good. We're good at the point guard position. We got some kids who can really handle the basketball now. And with uh, Kayla Bella coming back, she's got a great understanding of our offense now. I think she's she's a uh, she's in much better shape than what she was in the past. Uh, she understands what I want as a coach now. So I just think uh, we're going to be better because our kids from last year got that opportunity to. to get that experience that they need, like Zanaya White, who was freshman of the year last year. I think she's going to be so much better this year uh, because the competition is better. And I think like Kalen Watson last year, all these kids were young. Maya Clater was young. They was freshmen getting a lot of playing time for us. Now, coming back with the experience that they got last year, I think it's going to make our team so much better simply because the kids that we signed are going to push them for starting positions. Sure thing. Appreciate that, Coach. Coach Gilbert, if you could talk to us a little bit about your non-conference schedule and also your scheduling philosophy. Well, you know, here, here at Alcorn, we, we use we use a non-conference to try to help raise money for our program. And, uh, and uh, we try to bring as much money as we can in. And, but at the same time, we, we're trying to win these some of these non-conference games that we play. We know uh, the situation is going to be tough. Uh, like our first game of the year, we opened up with the University of Tulsa, uh, who finished 17 and 11 last year. That's a, that's, that's a good ball club. I and mean, we expect for them to be a tough game for us. And after playing Tulsa, we, 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 we go right over to Wichita State and play them. Uh, so that was two, our two first games against two top teams. And uh, getting prepared for them is, is going to be, a, it's gonna be a, a challenging situation for us. But, you know, we understand what we have to do when it comes to when we play uh, teams like that. We're always on the road. Uh, I think the good thing about this non-conference for, for Alcorn State women's basketball is we're getting an opportunity to play a lot of home games in this non-conference. Uh, we'll play uh, UNO at home on November the 22nd. Uh, we'll play UCF, UCA at home on, uh, on November the 29th. And uh, this has been probably, this is my third year. It's the most, most home games we play in non-conference. And we also play the University of Illinois, which I think is going to be a very challenging game for us in Champaign. And we'll go to uh, Colorado and play the University of Colorado uh, on December the, the 16th. So that's going to be a great game for us. And we're looking forward to the competition. Uh, that's, I think that's, that's one of those uh, teams that we have actually have a, uh, a contract with the conference with to play. But that game is not on the conference uh, uh, slate for this year. But it's going to be a very interesting game because Colorado has a very deep team. I kind of watched them on film from last year. Looking forward to playing against them, though. We also have Louisiana Tech. We'll go over there and play Tech in, in an early game, 2.30 uh, start in that game. So we're looking forward to that. That's, a, that's right there in Ruston. So it'll be very interesting. It'll be a good bus trip for us to get us the opportunity to, to really, uh, you know, have a good game and, and have some a team that's not far away. And uh, we ain't got to worry about flying and doing all that stuff. And at the same time, make money off the game. So uh, I think we have a very uh, competitive non-conference schedule. We'll finish up with the University of Alabama Birmingham on, on December 21st uh, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. So we're looking forward to that game. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fans out there since the game is not that far away. And uh, the competition is real good in the, in the uh, uh, non-conference schedule, but uh, it's, nothing like, it's nothing like that swag schedule. It's, it's, it's competition from, from top to bottom. So we're looking forward to it. Next question goes to Mia Berry. Hey, Coach, um, lots of room and areas for improvement between last year and this year. I wanted to know, how are you measuring like this improvement and growth? What are some of the benchmarks you're looking at for this team? Well, my, my, the biggest thing in my mind with our team on last year, we just had a hard time scoring the basketball. If you look back at some of the games that we played, uh, we was in a lot of those ball games and we lost them simply because we couldn't score the, ba score the basketball enough. Uh, I hope the difference between uh, this year team and last year team would be the fact that we we can score better. Uh, 
we can we can press people more and, and, and use our, our defensive schemes to help us score score more points. I just thought we had a hard time putting the ball in the basket last year. And not not we didn't have a hard time getting open and running our system. I thought our kids did a very good job of running our system and getting to the spots that we wanted to get to. But you know, uh, the purpose of running a play is to get open, but after you do all those things, you still got to make the shot. And we didn't do a very good job of, make, of shot making and uh, finishing plays. Uh, we lost a lot of close games last year. Uh, we lost a lot of a lot of kids who we were depending on last year to be there for us when it comes to injuries and and um, mental health situations. That you know that, that all that plays into not being able to play up to the potential that you expect from your team. But this year, uh, I think we're a lot deeper. I think we're uh, we're going to be a uh, a better scoring team this year, I think. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, how, how, how well we're going to react to some of the things that are uh, going to be thrown at us this year because uh, I really feel like our people from last year are better players simply because they went through what they went through last year and uh, and uh, they understand that we have – we did a better job of recruiting this year. We brought a, uh, some some talented people in this year and uh, we're looking forward for those people to push the kids from last year to make them better players. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach Kilbert, as always, we sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we will go to Bethune Cookman and head coach Creighton. I do see that we have coach uh, on with us, so we'll get her video here going momentarily. All right. I do see coach there with us. Uh, good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. How are you all? Doing great, Coach, and, and first and foremost, just want you to know that we are all thinking about you, uh, obviously, with the impending, uh, impending weather there uh, in the Florida area, so definitely we'll be keeping you guys uh, in our thoughts over the, over the next few days. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. We are, um, luckily, um, our administration took the necessary steps, and all of our students and our student-athletes are um, out of the area and safe. And so, you know, that's really what is most important. And so we got that done and now we're just kind of riding it out. Absolutely, so glad to hear that coach. Uh, coach, if you would please start us out with an opening statement about the 2022-2023 edition of the Bethune-Cookman Lady Wildcats. Um, the 2022-2023 edition of the Bethune-Cookman um, Wildcats is um, a new team, um, to be honest. Uh, we have nine new players, um, and we have uh, five returners, um, uh, one of which didn't, uh, unfortunately, was injured and wasn't able to play last year. And so we really do have a, a new team. And so we are really looking to, with that new team, even though it's a new team, it is still full of experience in a variety of different ways. Um, it is full of talent in a variety of different ways, um, and it is definitely full of individuals who are hungry to, to bring this program um, to the level we know it can be. Um, we're so excited to get to start this season here very soon. And um, we're just really working from the ground up, um, continuing to build our culture um, and moving in that right direction. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions. First question goes to Charles Bishop. How are you doing, Coach? I'm good. Uh, I noticed on, on your uh, opening schedule, you have a two game uh, swing and where you go to New York and in a lot of ways, uh, New York is considered a, a basketball mecca, but I talk about the importance of, of playing those games against uh, St. John's and Iona early. You know, um, there's actually a dual purpose in that. One of the purposes is of course, to play great talent. Um, it's really important that we get a chance to, um, I have worked at a variety of different places all over this country. And I think, as you said, um, New York is one of those places that is a mecca of basketball. And you're always going to find strong teams there who are going to challenge you. And, and why not do that, you know, right before you start such a challenging conference? There's also another strategic um, reason why we're doing that. Um, that occurs right after our finals. And, um, you know, I've always felt that it's very difficult for student athletes to have to stay on campus as they watch all of their counterparts leave for holiday. When we play a different sport, we have to stay um, during the holidays. There's no such thing for us, but it's very difficult for them to just stay on campus and watch all of their team, or all of their friends and everything leave and go. And so for me, I thought it was important to one, get a, 
a great set of games with strong talent to play against, but to, to give our, our student athletes a chance to also leave. You know, we're going to also be packing up and leaving, um, which really helps with the morale. We're also going to be giving um, our student athletes an experience that many of them have never had, which is going to New York and seeing New York in in the winter, in Christmas, during Christmas time is, is special. And so to give them that opportunity along with the competitive opportunity to really see where we are, um, it won't be the beginning, right? It won't be the beginning of the season. We will have had some games to kind of get our, our feet under us and really see where we stack up um, as we start um, our transition into SWAT conference play. And so for us, there's dual purpose, but I really think it's gonna be a great trip and a great opportunity for this team. Good thing. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Hi. Coach Creighton. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Doing well. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, wanted to ask you a little bit about some of those new players coming in. Uh, can you give a little more detail in terms of those players? Well, um, you know, I'm really. Uh, proud of the class we brought in. I'm very pleased with it. I'm also proud of my, my staff. They did a great job recruiting. Um, we thought it important that we bring in individuals um, in all, all the areas you can recruit from at this point. So we do have um, a couple of people, a couple of players from the transfer portal. We do have a couple of JUCO players. And then we also have the traditional freshmen. Um, and they're coming from all over. We have a young lady from Detroit. Um, we have a young lady from Baltimore, um, Georgia, two from Georgia, one from Pennsylvania. And those are our freshmen and they're coming in really hungry. We have several who are um, coming off of championships in their high school, um, in their high school experience. And um, there's nothing, you can't really teach that part of it, right? You can't teach um, winning in that way if you've already experienced it and bringing that culture of winning in is very important. We also have two young ladies from the transfer portal, one from Buffalo, one from um, Indiana, and they're both uh, have a, a, a plethora of experience, um, some at a higher uh, level, um, if you want to say that, but they have uh, an experience and a, a culture of winning as well. And then we have two um, JUCO players who are coming in and they're coming in um, with experience from Georgia and from Texas. So we're kind of uh, broadening our footprint as well. And all of these young ladies are coming in with either experience in winning in high school or experience at the college level, um, which can, can only help you. Um, all of them come from winning programs. And we want to just infuse that desire to win, that hunger for working every day to get into a winning situation. Um, into our program as well. I'd like to follow up with a question in terms of your style of play. Can you talk a little bit about what uh, preferred style of play you'd like to use offensively, defensively, and in particular, these recruits that you bring in, will they allow you to play that? Yeah, um, you know, last year, um, we really wanted to play uh, up-tempo. We really wanted to play fast. We want to play in, we wanted to play in transition. Um, and uh, due to our numbers, due to um, some things, we weren't able to do that quite as much as we wanted to. We were extremely successful when we were able to press, but when you have about eight players, it's hard to do that an extended amount of time um, effectively. So for us, we really want to do that this year, and we have a full roster to do that. We brought in um, players at all positions who like to move up and down the court. We brought in players who can play multiple positions. Uh, we brought in, brought in players who can um, attack the basket well. And so um, in our recruiting, we kind of knew what we wanted to, to look for, what we were looking for. We were able to bring in those, along with those that are still on the team from last year, um, and able to move up and down the court a lot more quickly, move up and down the court consistently and for a longer period of time over the game because – we don't just have eight, you know, we have a full roster. We're able to bring in people off the bench who will be able to keep that pace up, you know, consistently. So we're really excited about um, the potential to do those things. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank you so much. Last question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach Creighton. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. 
you have nine new players. Can you talk a little bit about the process of getting everyone to the chemistry and getting everyone to buy into your system? Yes, yes. You know, um, nine new players is a challenge, um, but one aspect of it that we have already seen, you know, bring benefits to us is the fact that even though there are nine new players, we recruited all of them. And so it's not like walking in the door, we're meeting them. We've been developing relationships with them over the past year. And so we're now able to just continue to cultivate those relationships. Um, and that really helps a lot. We also were able to have our team on campus during the summer, which was invaluable really in that building that those relationships, building that chemistry, building that culture that we are looking for. Um, it's a day by day process. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's one that we are taking very seriously both on and off the court. I feel uh, as though it's important, not only that you continue to build that chemistry on the court, but that you find ways to do that off the court as well. We've had team, you know, team parties for the 4th of July, everybody was um, on campus and you can't practice. So we all went to the beach. We had a big beach party, you know, um, we have sessions with, we are fortunate enough to have sports psychologists. And so we have team sessions, we have team building, um, and then also we just have times where we kind of hang out. The, the team comes into the office, hangs out with the coaches. And it can be some of those things that, that really help build the relationships, really help build the trust you need that flows over into onto the court and into the game. And so for us, it's day by day. It's in a lot of different ways, different facets um, of life and of the game. But for us, we're just really excited to have a chance to bring this team together. Um, and to see what we can do. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank you so much. Coach Creighton, we sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this season. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for giving me a chance to speak with you all. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Coach. No problem. Next up, we will be joined by Coach Pillow with Florida a and I do see that we have uh, coach on and there goes coach right there. Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. How are you? Doing great, coach. Thanks so much for asking. Coach, just want to also uh, extend our, our thoughts to you, uh, to you all as well there in the Florida area, obviously with the weather situation, uh, potentially uh, having some impact there, uh, but just want to let you know we are thinking about you and your team. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Coach Pillow, if you could uh, start us out with an opening statement about the 2022-2023 edition of the Florida a and Rattlers. Uh, oh, okay. So we're, we're excited. We've got several new players. Well, the portal has been, has been really good to us. Um, we've got three kids from Canada. I call them the Canadian Connection. Um, so they all came from the portal and they're with us now. Um, that's Mide, Paula, and Ari. Um, also have um, a, a new post player. Um, this is a transfer. Uh, her name is Skylar. Um, she, we're looking for some post presence, so she'll be able to be an addition in the post for us. And we also have Yvette, who actually came from Spain um, by way of Ball State. So um, a couple of new pieces. Um, it's really helped us be more competitive and, and practice, um, having new players and some more competitors on the team. So um, really looking excited to seeing how that all comes together. And also some of our returners, um, we got Dylan Horton back um, healthy, which is a blessing. And then also um, uh, a couple of our post players have picked up their game and they're gonna be an addition as well. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We now open it up for questions for Coach Pillow. First question goes to Charles Hallman. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? I'm well, Charles. How are you doing? Doing very well. Um, Good. I'd like you to speak upon the uh, the recent announcement that the Pac-12 and SWAC uh, Legacy Series is going to pick off this year, that you will be playing at California, which I believe uh, featured two Black female head coaches, one from the HBCU and one from, from the Power 5 Conference. You can just speak on just those two things, please. Yeah, we're really excited to have the opportunity to go out to California and the San Francisco area. And um, I'm always big on our team getting experiences outside of the basketball court. So um, that's a great opportunity for us. And what a blessing and an honor to be able to coach against a 
a Pac-12 school and another black female coach. Um, there's not many of us as, as big as uh, women's basketball is and as many black female players we have, we don't have that many black female head coaches. So to have both of us come together and be able to compete on a national level is, is really exciting and a great opportunity as well. A follow-up on that, is it a big deal that we're making because of that? Uh, we are a black newspaper, that's why we make it a big deal. But in terms of just overall and the overall scheme of things in 2022, having more black females or having two black females coaching against each other. Yeah, um, I don't know how much of a deal has been made of right now, maybe closer to game time. And when we start start uh, laying down a storyline, but um, it definitely is a big deal. And uh, that's something that I'm excited about. Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck this season. Thank you. Coach Charles Bishop. How are you doing, Coach Phillip? Hey, I'm well. How about you? We're doing well. And you started off uh, by mentioning the, the Canadian connection, but I wanted to ask you a little bit about the international presence of, of those players on your team. What sort of dynamic does it bring to your ball club? It brings a different perspective. And it, to the game because a lot of times when you have international students is their survival this is the way they get to stay in the country this is how they get their education this is how they're able to go back to their home country and make an impact so it's much bigger than basketball and it's a way of survival for them in many cases so that also brings another competitive edge and a different type of energy and practices and around the team Quick follow-up, uh, what do you think it takes for to kind of vault uh, the, your program into the upper echelon of, of the SWAC that you I think uh, we're doing a great job in recruiting right now and bringing the different pieces that align with our culture that we're trying to build and our values. So um, that's a process for sure. Um, it, although this is my third season, it's only my second season coaching. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity for us to get back on the court with these new pieces and see how it comes together as we try to keep moving the needle and, and building our, our brand here. Good thing. Appreciate that, Coach. Yeah. Question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well. I, we see you tapped into the transfer portal a little bit, got players from international players. Can you talk about the process of bringing them up to speed and getting them ready to play high-level SWAC basketball? Well, I think one of the benefits of going into the portal is having some student athletes who have already had Division One experience and know what it, knows what it looks like to be successful and to play at a high level. And that was why we were so heavy on the portal, especially while we were trying to build and be successful early. Um, as far as getting them caught up, um, they already had that competitive edge. They already know the pace and the speed in which the game is played. Um, but most of them were here during the summer. So we had the opportunity for them to get caught up on the plays and our philosophies and things like that long, along those lines. But at the end of the day, basketball is basketball. It's just really getting familiar with the expectations. And um, sometimes you call things different in different programs, but just getting them caught up. That, they've, they've fallen into place really well. And they've been a great addition. Quick follow-up to that. You mentioned this is pretty much due to COVID. This is really your second year coaching in the SWAC. What are some things that you think you'll be more prepared for and ready for this season? Well, even though um, last season was the first time coaching, it still kind of felt like COVID. There were so many um, COVID cases still. Um, th there wasn't a lot of consistency as far as um, who was going to play who wasn't because we didn't know who was going to be sick who was going to be injured so on so i think now um hopefully um we are past COVID and won't have such an impact um on the team as far as knowing who's going to play who's not so we can have some type of good consistency and um other than that uh, i think it's what i've learned you don't know what you don't know uh you don't know what you don't know so um I feel like I, I have a little bit more experience under my belt and um, I've been working really hard as an individual to be a better coach and the girls have met me as, as well as working really hard to be better players. So I think us all on the same page of working hard towards a common goal is really going to be the difference in this season. Thank you, coach. Mm -hmm. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. 
This is Kenyatta Cabill with Dr. Bill's Inside, the HBC Sports Lab. Hello. Good afternoon, Coach Phillip. Hey, Good thank afternoon. you. Wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, your style of play. Um, are you going to push forward with the same style of play or with the new players that you come in, are you going to change the style of play? And, and what do you prefer when you like to see offensive, defensive, moving the basketball around the court? Yeah, that's the great question. So I would say last year is not the style of play that we wanted to play. It's just what was necessary um, with the circumstances. Um, so part of building your culture and program are recruiting those type of kids that fit into your style of play and what you want to do. So as I said, um, with there being so many uncertainties last year, it was more of survival than actually um, placing what we want to look like moving forward. So now that we have some new kids and new players in place, um, I can get back to trying to play up tempo, turning our defense into our offense and really pushing the ball and just causing havoc on the defensive end. Um, rebounding is gonna be huge for us because we're still undersized. We got some bigger players, but overall we're undersized. So we really have to do a great job of keeping our opponents off the board. So that's something that we've been working on daily is just being really tough, being really physical on the boards. Now, I also have kids that are really smart. So um, we're able to run a half court play. We're not just gonna be a one trick pony per se. We're gonna be able to push it in transition. If we don't have anything, we're smart enough to be able to pull it out, get into a set and explore our options out of that set. Thank you coach. Look forward to seeing you in Texas. Uh, for, yeah, for around, we're really excited about Southern that trip. Issue. Yeah, excited about getting to Texas this year for sure. No doubt. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Coach Pillar, we sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this upcoming season. Thank you so much. Everyone be safe and have a great day. Thank you. All right, bye. Next up, we're going to be joined by Coach Murray with Grambling State. I do see we have Coach on with us. We're going to get Coach's video going here momentarily. Do you see that we have Coach there? Good afternoon, Coach. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you all doing? Doing great, Coach. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, Coach Murray, if you could please start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Grambling State Lady Tigers. Uh, we're excited for the upcoming season. Uh, you know, we lost a lot last year. All of our starters uh, graduated and moved on. Um, we entered this year with a lot of new faces. Um, we're working hard right now, chemistry-wise, to uh, prepare for the season. And uh, uh, it's going to be an exciting season, uh, and we're looking forward to it. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions for Coach Murray. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. How's it going this afternoon, Coach How you Murray? doing, Dr. Cavill? How you doing? I'm doing well. It's good to see you again. Uh, wanted to ask you a little about the natural part of the college game where you have the uh, turnover on your roster. Can you talk a little bit more about um, who you're bringing in to the program and what has you excited as you move towards the season? Yeah, we uh, like I said, we did lose uh, some 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 players that did some great things for the program, uh, and we wished them well as they ventured on into coaching and professional uh, play. Uh, going into this particular season, we addressed a lot of those needs uh, through the transfer portal as well as uh, from recruiting high school to junior college ranks. Uh, we have some key players coming in that I think are going to uh, contribute right away. Uh, Miracle Saxon is coming in from California. She's a transfer. Um, we have another young lady, Tiana Gardner, from the Texas area who's coming in as a transfer. Demaya Young, who play college ball in Arkansas. She's coming in as a transfer. Um, we have um, Jasmine Jackson, who's a, a, a very talented uh, freshman uh, guard out of the Texas area. She's coming in as well. Uh, and we also picked up on uh, a, a post player that played out in the Cal Carolina, who's a transfer. We also leaning on some players that played heavily last year, Leah Morrow, Fee Allen, um, Sierra Ellington, uh, Journey McLaurin. We got some players that did get a chance to get uh, a lot of play last year that we're going to lean on heavily for their experience. And like I said, we're going to try to put this thing together and hopefully we play great basketball going into conference play. 
been in the league for a while now and had a chance to see what you like to do offensively, defensively, schematic. Is it going to be more uh, of that moving forward or based on the fact that you have the churning in the roster or some things that you want to do differently or, or, and, uh, or some things that you've added to what you want to see get done with this program? Well, I've always said, you know, a team – uh, that has uh, pretty dominant post play uh, usually is a team that's going to win our conference. And it's, 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 uh, it's actually have shown that uh, over the last couple of years, uh, you know, we hope to have be a little bit more dominant inside from a post standpoint. Uh, we're going to continue to play the way that we play, um, uh, you know, looking to play in an open court set as well as in a half court set. We're going to try to create, you know, a lot of problems defensively. Uh, those are the type of players that we consistently recruit into our program. So, you know, even though we lose right. a lot, you know, I always say we don't rebuild, we reload. And so we're going to be very talented again this year, and I hope to be in the top of the conference again. Certainly, Coach Moore. Look forward to the reloaded Tigers uh, this season. Good luck. Thank you. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. Coach Murray, how are you doing? Hey, Mr. Bishop, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask a little uh, question as far as uh, your scheduling uh, and, and looking at uh, the regionality of your scheduling. I, I noticed that you have a West Coast swing and, and you're playing games in Hawaii, but I wanted to ask about the style of play on the West Coast, whether that uh, helps uh, when you come back uh, into conference play. I think it does. I think it does. So many teams now, our conference has gotten so much better than it was when I first came back to the SWAC in 15. A lot of great coaches, they're bringing a lot of different styles in. Uh, to be able to go and play quality uh, opponents, uh, different styles that you kinda, you're gonna see, uh, I think it only benefits you to kind of venture out. Uh, we uh, have done that, you know, rarely. I mean, we've, we've, we've done that consistently every year. Uh, we're gonna always play all over the country. We're gonna play against the best. Uh, we're gonna low up our non-conference schedule pretty heavy. Uh, and I think everything uh, benefits you, you know, if you are able to go into postseason play, you're gonna play a lot of those teams. So it's not gonna be nothing that you're not gonna have seen before. Um, but um, again, our schedule is always gonna be tough uh, uh, going into non-conference and uh, our kids have really benefited from that year in, year out. Sure thing, appreciate that coach. You're welcome. Goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? Hey, Mia. How you doing today? I'm doing well. We're not gonna have a long talk today. Maybe a little bit later. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> My quick question for you: Can you talk? You know, you have a young team. What are some things that you are focusing heavily on going into this season? Right now, we're developing chemistry. I always say chemistry is what's key. Uh, I've been fortunate over the last few years to have players that have been in the program for four and five years. And so a lot of your success hinges on those players knowing what to do in key moments of, of the game and key moments throughout the season. Right now, I'm trying to develop that chemistry. Uh, we've had some great practices over the last few, few, few days, and we're moving in that direction. And I like the direction that we're going because our kids are hungry. They you know, they know that you know, a lot of people aren't going to really, uh, you know, uh, worry about us because they know we lost a lot and they feel as though, you know, we're going to be a team that's going to be rebuilding. But, I, you know, I beg the different. I think we're going to be a team that's going to be right in the thick of things as the season goes on. And I'm looking forward to see how, they all, how it all plays out. Quick follow-up to that. Who has really kind of emerged in that leadership role to kind of help and guide some of these players along? Leo Morrow. Leo Morrow stands out for me. She's a, a player that usually is a focus on everybody's team. Uh, when they play against uh, the Grammy Lady Tigers, she's someone that really has embellished the, you know, having that leadership role and this being her last year, really getting a chance to really, you know, take her game to, to the next level. She's someone that has been working hard in the weight room, working hard uh, in uh preseason workouts and it's carrying over into practice. Uh, so she's one that I can definitely say that uh, a lot of people are really um, uh, going to have to deal with this year. If I had to throw another one in there, I probably would say Kobe Maples. Kobe Maples is a freshman, but was a freshman last year that played a lot. Uh, 
obviously, you know, you want to see them take that next step uh, to, uh, you know, take that game to another level. And I think she's worked hard in the offseason as well. And she's primed to have a great uh, bounce back here going into her second year. Thank you, Coach. Have a great rest of today and good luck this season. Thank you. Coach, just one last question. Uh, obviously, the Pac-12 uh, and the SWAC recently announced the partnership of the Legacy Series where uh, Pac-12 teams will essentially uh, play home-and-home -home series with uh, SWAC member institutions centered around raising awareness for uh, social justice and anti-racism initiatives. Coach, talk a little bit about that uh, partnership and the opponent that you'll be playing in that series. I'm looking forward to it. You know, they were a team that actually we both were already on schedule to play each other this year. So uh, actually we were supposed to play uh, the COVID year, but we didn't get a chance to play. And we talked about it again and was able to get each other on schedule this year. Then it became a part of the, the SWAC Pac-12 uh, initiative. And we're looking forward to it. They're a program that I've followed quite a bit. I've had friends that coached on that program uh, for years. I've uh, kind of known their success. Uh, it even kind of dates back to when I made it to the NCAA tournament many years ago, we were in the pit, we were pairing together to play uh, back when Breon January was playing for Arizona State. So I like the draw. I like the fact that uh, even the new coaches there now I've had, I've known her for quite a while and it's a great friendship that I, that we've had o over, over the years. And uh, I think it's going to be uh, a great union between the two conferences. I think they get a chance to really come and see, you know, the HBCU atmosphere and some of the things that make us special. And in, in return, we get a chance to do the same thing and play some great basketball. Coach Murray, we sincerely appreciate your time. Good luck this season. Thank you all. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Jackson State and Coach Reed with the Lady Tigers. I do see that we have Coach with us, so we'll get Coach's video there going. Good afternoon, Coach. Hello. Coach, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. We know it's an extremely busy time of year as you get your team prepared for the upcoming season. Uh, with that being said, Coach, start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Jackson State Lady Tigers. Well, um, I'm extremely excited about this group. Um, we have, you know, we right now we have a really strong recruiting class that we brought in. My staff did a good job of bringing in a really strong class. And we're, we are returning a couple of really tough players that has helped this program win championships. And so um, I've just been really excited about the core that we have and how the chemistry has been coming along. Obviously, you guys know that we lost a lot in the Misha Williams holiday and then Deja Rogan. And so those two players were very, very key in our program success. And so now we are having to uh, refine tune kind of and, and, try, and try to find, you know, other players who can come out and be those top players for us um, in this season. Uh, like I said, very skilled team, very talented team. This may, this year's team may be the most skilled and the most talented team I've ever coached here at Jackson State. And I'm really, really, really excited about uh, what this team brings to the floor. Let's open the comments. Coach Reed, first question goes to Charles Bishop. Coach Reed, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, you were selected to play in the preseason uh, women's uh, NIT uh, tournament, and I wanted to ask, how excited are you to uh, put this team up against uh, other teams around the country, such as Colorado, Louisiana, Lafayette, and Texas Tech? Well, I, I'm I'm really excited about our schedule. Um, initially, when we first started, we had a lot of you know heartaches in terms of trying to fill our schedule because nobody wanted to play us. Um, you know, we had a lot of Power Five schools uh, coming wanting to come here. University of Florida was considering coming here. UCLA was considering to come here. And you know, when you build a powerhouse team at an HBCU, um, a lot of the 
bigger schools don't want to play. But needless to say, being invited into the WNIT Challenge gives us an opportunity to play some really good schools. Um, it gives us opportunity to, to be able to win a couple of those games. Obviously, our goal is to win a whole championship. Um, but I, I am so thankful for the WNIT Challenge, and it gives us, you know, an opportunity to see early what our players are like. And, you know, that that tournament style play, which is back to back games, you know, we'll get opportunity to see what we're really made of early. Uh, let me ask a quick follow up. Uh, you mentioned uh, Amisha Williams Holiday and Deja Rogan, uh, 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 the vacuum uh, that they leave. Uh, are there players that you've already sort of tabbed or looking at to sort of fill those shoes uh, that they left? Great question. Last last year, a lot of people didn't know about Daphne White. A six five post player, power five transfer, five star player, top ten recruit in the country. Uh, she set out. She set out. Didn't want to play because she didn't want to miss an entire semester. And she was a big body who helped Amisha get better. I think she prepared Amisha for this past season and a good year that Amisha had. So we'll have Daphne White this year. Totally different player from Amisha. She's more power down low, more back, back to the basket type of player. Amisha was more of a face-up type of player, finesse. Daphne is a grinder. She's going to get into the, 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 the muscle of things on the, on the block. And so, you know, hopefully we'll get her on the block who can feel those, feel those shoes. Daphne White is a true 6'5 player. You know, we kind of stretched Amisha on the roster a little bit to be a 6'4", six, 6'5 six, player for us. But Daphne is a true 6'5 post player. Uh, she'll bring a lot of size to the floor. And we also, you know, have a, another 6'6 six, six post player who transferred in from California, McDonald All-American uh, power, uh, a five star athlete, and I and I like to talk about who they are because that's what they're showing me on the floor, and they bring a lot of excitement um, with the way they play and the confidence that they have, you know, on the floor. So down there on that block, you know, I'm really excited. You, we'll still have Deja Woodard returning, who's going to be able to to make up some of those rebounds, blocks in baskets for Amisha. So whereas we had a really good Amisha, now we have about two or three players that we're going to have to fit together to kind of um, fulfill her role. Uh, and, and in terms of Rogan missing her, she was extremely quick. Not sure if we can match that quickness with what we have this year, but we have players who, who can score the ball like Rogan scored the ball. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And, and I think the speed will come, but the thing of, for me is putting that ball in the basket and being able to play defense. And I think we have those areas filled. Sure thing. Appreciate it, Coach. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good afternoon, Coach Reed. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, doing well. You got me excited about all this new talent coming in. Can you talk a little bit more? Those were folks that sat out. Do you have some transfers that came in? Uh, that you also want to see get in the mix? And if you do, would you talk a little bit about what they bring to the table? Yes, we have um, Liz Martino, Elizabeth transfer from Rutgers. And I mean, she can flat out shoot the cover off the ball. Um, being here at Jackson State, we have seen her uh, game increase tremendously. We've seen her confidence go to another level. We've seen her develop some other skills of the game. Um, you know, making her a three-level score, as my coaches call it. Um, she's she just brings so much more to the floor than we than I've seen in my time here at Jackson State. She's a silent killer, you know, and, and I'm excited for her uh, to see her in action. Um, and then we have Angel Jackson, um, who transferred from USC, and Angel is just playing extremely well for us. Um, she's very confident. Uh, she brings a lot to the floor. She can, you know, she's outside, inside type of player. Um, just excited about what she brings. And, you know, those are my top two transfers. And, and then we had Daphne White sitting out. We talked about earlier, uh, big post player sitting out. And then, you know, we have Maya Crump. You know, we have uh, Kishana Luckett, Jaria Covington, very experienced guards that I'm super excited about. 
that's going to get these players going. Um, and you can't forget about Deja Woodard, the game that she had in the LSU game. I think she's just been rolling from that game and she's just everything that we have you, that we need going into this new season. And Lemiracle Sims returning her. And then I have a 6'5 freshman that, you know, freshmen normally don't get an opportunity to see the floor. But this 6'5 freshman is so tough. I mean, she plays so well. And, uh, and she just does not bow down to the, the players that's on the floor. And, I, and I'm, ex I'm excited to see her and our other freshman, Haley. Uh, we, we just, we're, we, are, we needed to reload. We needed to be deeper than 10 coming into this season, what we're trying to have. And we are about 11 to 12 players deep that we can play and get some good game out of. Thank you, Coach Reed. Look forward to the season. Good luck. Thank you. Last question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? Hey, Mia. Doing well. How are you? Well, that's a whole lot of hardware I see behind you. <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> okay, I see you got it. But my question for you, we, you and I have talked a lot about you building this program up. Can you talk a little bit about how building this program and how you, the coaching staff, and the program itself are kind of reaping the rewards from it? You know, I, I'm I'm just extremely thankful. It, it's 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 this has been a true blessing. What has been offered and what has been done with our program, and you know, it's it's beyond my coaches and I. It's just some great favor and blessings and mercy that God has shown up on us. But I am so thankful for my coaching staff. They understand the vision and they understand what I wanted to accomplish when, when I came here to Jackson State University. And every year they have elevated in the talent that they have recruited into the program. And I'm extremely thankful for that. Um, you know, right now, it's just a standard. You know, we have a standard, we have the foundation formed and created, and, and, and we have expectations. And the players that come on understands what it is that to be a part of Jackson State Women's Basketball. You know, we're just not wanting to be great in our conference. And in our conference have a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players. But we also want to be great outside our conference. We want to be able to represent. We want to be able to put HBCUs back on the map. And, 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 I, and I love how our conference is growing. I love how our conference rosters are growing. It's important not just for Jackson State to be good, but for the entire SWAC to be great. And we're just so thankful to, to be in this moment to be able to do some of the things we've done. Okay, very quick follow-up, Andrew. It's a yes or no. I talked to Coach Prime at Media Day for football. He said he had a present for you. He wanted to know, have you seen the present? Have you got to unwrap it or anything of that nature? <laughs> no. Thank Mia, you. can you follow up and make sure I get my gift? Because Prime... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, Coach Reed, I got you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, and I'll be talking to you all season. All right. Thank you, guys. Coach Reed, I know we went a little bit over, but we do sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this season. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you. Next up, we will go to Mississippi Valley State and head coach Anderson. We can get Coach Anderson's video going here. You see, we have Coach there. Good afternoon, Coach. Hey, how you doing? Doing great, doing great. Coach, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to join us. Coach, if you would please start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. You would, you would ask me that. As of now, you know, I'm rebuilding this program. I came in and I'm May the 3rd, so right now I'm, I'm just up for a little challenge because I was not able to get out to recruit. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, uh, thank you for that opening statement. And we'll now open it up for questions. First question goes to Charles Hall. Good afternoon, Coach, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, keeping in mind that you are trying to get things together, uh, but can you speak on the series that was announced yesterday that the Pac-12 was uh, playing the SWAC and that you're hosting one of those schools uh, how important that is to have a Power Five school come to the HBCU and play, as opposed to vice versa. Oh, I think it's awesome. Um, 
actually I'm trying to get my 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 players motivated um, to be involved in having a, a big time Pac-12 school come to Mississippi Valley State and of course vice versa. So uh, just trying to fit my girls in the scheme of thing and getting them ready for that game. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck this season. Thank you. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill. Dr. Cavill's inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Good afternoon, Coach. Good, hi. I'm doing well. Thank you for that. Thank you. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your offensive scheme, schematics. How would you like to see this team play basketball? Oh, my God. You know what? As of now, I'm trying to find five young ladies that's going to, you know, fit together to be motivated to run an offense. Right now, we, you know, I got I got a young team that's coming in. I'm, I'm still trying to put pieces together. So um, hopefully what I see, my uh, they, they, they're quick. Um, they play hard. They play hard. So with the offense, um, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to, to run up and down the court and okay. transition. Yeah. Can I ask you a follow-up in regards to the defensive side? Is it, is it much change to that? Is there certain things that you'd like to see? Or, or do you need more time to really uh, understand how you would like to do? Or is it more a mental part of the game that you want them to think about playing defensive? What does that look like for you? Well, as of now, you know, I'm trying to get players together. You know, it's kind of hard to speak on anything as of now because we're just not getting started. I'm just I'm finding the pieces that can fit into my system. So um, I, I say give me another three weeks and hopefully gotcha. we'll have it together. No problem with that. Yeah. In terms of coming in with that process, has that has, is that mentally taxing uh, of really going through that process or is that just part of the coaching schematics as things change and being able to be nimble to move along well, with it? I, I've been here before. So, you know, I'm, I just take one day at a time, like I said, trying to just get my players motivated. Um, I have high okay. energy girls that believe in, in what I'm trying to teach them. Like I said, I'm just trying to take one day at a time because this is a great, this is a great lead that I'm um, going to be playing against. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to see you. Thank you. Really taking questions for Coach Anderson with Mississippi Valley State. Next question goes to Rob J. Thank you, Andrew, for taking my question. Uh, Coach, you know, considering that, that you're just getting started and you, you're trying to get these players, how patient do you need uh, Valley supporters to be with you and this team? It's going to take at least five years, um, of course, to try to get the, the right players to build up this program. So I think that um, I, I, we're actually moving in the right direction but it's just going to take a, a, a little bit of time to get everything that we need to get started. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to you. Thank you. Next question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You know, coming into this season, you didn't get the opportunity to recruit just yet, but what are you really looking forward to with, to see these players when SWAC play and non-conference play starts? I actually, just to work hard and, and, and just to give me their best. That's all I can ask for. Because like I said, they're, as of now, they're working extremely hard for me and, um, and they're buying into what I'm, what I'm feeding them. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but I see, I see us competing. Okay. What does competing look like, like middle of the conference? What do you, have you set goals or expectations of them just yet? Like I said, I'm just taking one day at a time. That's all I can ask of them. Um, hope, hopefully, uh, by the by the time we get the conference, we'll be ready. Okay. Any sorry, last follow up. Any okay. anyone standing out just yet for you? Or well, you know, we we got Zakia Mahoney's coming back, and so um, she's a she's really have been a, a great leader on the court. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Anderson, one question for me. Uh, obviously, having the, the opportunity to visit the, the arena there that, that you play your games in, it, it's really an amazing facility. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, 
how much of a benefit it is uh, when it comes to recruiting and, and, and getting the players that uh, you want to bring into the program uh, to have that type of facility uh, for them to practice and play in? Yeah, you know, I always help when you got a, a, a good facility to play in. It's just about getting out and trying to um, recruit and get players in here. You know, but the, the facility itself will sell itself. My thing is, is just getting out and, and trying to get um, players from different areas to come to buy in and, and want to be here at Mississippi Valley. Take one more question from Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. Back again. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you said the facility is selling itself. Mm -hmm. How have you and the coaching staff kind of started that recruiting process for next year's class? Oh, my God. We are getting out. We are going um different areas. We got a a, a, a Danbury we're going to this weekend. And um, just like, like I said, just trying to get the monies in place so that we'll be able to go to different areas. Appreciate that, Coach. Thank you. You're welcome. Coach Anderson, uh, once again, welcome to the league and good luck this season. Thank you very much. I appreciate the call. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we'll go to Prairie View a and and Coach Pugh with the Lady Panthers. I do see that we have Coach Pugh on the Zoom session with us. Good afternoon, Coach. Hello. How's everybody doing? Doing great, Coach. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, and, and Coach, first and foremost, thank you so much for your time. We know it's an extremely busy time of year uh, for your programs. You get set for the upcoming season, so we do appreciate it. Um, Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Prairie View and Lady Panthers? Um, we're really, uh, this is an amazing group. Um, we returned six, uh, seven returnees, got one, Tamirical Taylor, who um, was supposed to have been here last year, but had some, some personal um, issues that she needed to step back from basketball. Um, she graduated, and so she's back with us this year. And then we signed um, six new um, kids to come in and participate with us. Um, we call them newbies, so have six newbies. So um, they're very fun to watch. They're great. Um, just just exciting to watch them play. Um, tremendous three-point shooters. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to be able to do more of what we've been trying to do since we've been here, which is get out and transition and, uh, and play at a faster place. Last year, um, uh, the point guard that we were counting on uh, to Miracle and the Rosario kid, the Rosario kid uh, hurt her foot and she wasn't able to participate at the level we had hoped. And then to Miracle, um, had to step back. So we ended up having to move our two guard over. Um, so we had our hiccups at that position last year and we had to, you know, do what we could to um, make it work. But when you have a, a Diana Rosenthal, uh, a tremendous player, uh, second team all, all conference participant. And then uh, you also have um, Kennedy Hurd returning and uh, uh, Kennedy Paul, which is probably one of the most prolific two of the most prolific three-point shooters in the league. And um, both of those kids are returning. And um, we also have Michaela Hutchin, who sat out last year, um, kid that came over from Trinity Valley. So she's healthy and she's on the court. So we're excited about everything. And then that we're also excited about the way the pieces are coming together. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach Pugh. We're not gonna open it up for questions. We're gonna mix them up a little bit here and we'll take our first question. From Mark Berman. How you doing, Coach? Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Pretty fair. When, when you look at what y'all have done the, since you've been at Prairie View, what are, what are some – I know coaches don't like to put specific numbers on a question like – answer like this, but – to a question like this. But when you look at expectations, what are reasonable for you guys right now? Oh, that's a great question. You know, of course, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I always think we should be challenging for that, you know, number one slot year in and year out. Um, like I said, I, I hope last year would be the year that we would round that corner, but we had some injuries. Uh, we definitely know that we have uh, the, the score and we have the offense this year. Uh, we can, we can score in a hurry, put a lot of points on the board. Um, they're going to be a lot of, they're going to be really exciting to watch. Um, you know, I've been coaching 30 years now. 
And um, since I've been at Prairie View, this is definitely the second best team I've had since I've been here. If not, depends on depending on how they develop. Um, I think that the Gerald Smith kid is really stepping up her game. She was ill, uh, took ill in January, missed three weeks of practice and everything, and just never really got back in step. So we're hoping that she's going to step in and uh, continue the cycle and stay healthy for us this year because she's going to be a big part of what we do. Uh, we have a lot of phenomenal pieces. Um, we have Niam Thornton, who came to us from Penn State, um, um, just an incredible point guard. And um, we also have uh, Destiny Jenkins, um, the kid who hit the big shots for UIW to send them to the tournament. She can shoot it from 30 feet. So um, our ability to shoot the three ball is what's going to stand out to a lot of people. You know, we're going to try to um, put that thing up in the three every, you know, eight seconds. So we're going to be getting it up and down the court with a lot of uh, intensity. So um, one thing, uh, we're going to be lacing it up and we're going to roll and we're going to run and we're going to run and we're going to pressure the ball full court, um, do a lot of half court trapping. So it's going to be a wonderful brand of basketball. So going to be getting back to the mayhem um, that I've been known for uh, at my previous institution. So like I said, I'm excited about it. We've got a great schedule, uh, playing the University of Tulsa, uh, University of Florida, Oregon State, Southeastern, uh, Jarvis Christian, Houston Tillotson. And we're also playing Washington State uh, in the Pac-12 Challenge. However, we have to go there and then they'll come back here. Uh, the next year. So great schedule on hand, great team, phenomenal people, um, all excellent students. Uh, Kennedy Paul just recently got back. She went down to uh, the HBCU initiative at the White House. Uh, um, you know, it was a celebration of her success in the classroom. So we've had a lot of success in the classroom and um, we want to carry that success not only in the classroom, but we want to also do it on the court. And we're looking for a phenomenal uh, season this year. We just got to stay healthy. Is your shirt what your team is all about? What it says there? You know what? This is an old shirt. You know, so oh, yeah. I, but, uh, I, you know, I'm in practice right now. So I'm like, I got to get on this thing and get off. But, you know, the kids are out. And so I just wanted to jump on. But uh, one team, one family, one PV, you know, uh, Purvey is a phenomenal place. And uh, th th this shirt speaks volumes about what we're about over here on the hill. Thanks, coach. You're welcome. Next question goes to Charles Hallman. Good afternoon, Coach. Charles Hallman from the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder. Hey, Charles. How are you doing? Uh, can you speak on the new series that was announced uh, yesterday, the Pac-12 uh, SWAC uh, series? And then a follow-up on that. If you could speak on our people here in Minnesota, don't holler to see HBCU play. Can you just speak on is the Overall scheme of things, how does the SWAC fits in in the overall scheme things of college basketball? I didn't get that last part. How does SWAC how, fit? How does it, the overall scheme of things in college basketball, how does the SWAC conference overall fits into that? Okay. Well, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was not a fan of playing this, 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 this Pac-12 uh, game when it came around because it came around really late. Uh, and I thought we were done with our schedule. So we had to make this fit. Um, and we did everything we could to make it work. And um, we were able to get it scheduled with Washington to fit it within the, the framework of what um, the flow. Um, if you've ever, you know, done a budget, it's expensive to fly out to the West Coast. So when your budget is already set and you've already done all this, you, you know, you, you really need to try to find extra money to make it happen. So. Um, I'm, I'm thankful for, you know, um, Coach Pete, Coach uh, Miss Addison, and all of those who work with us to try to get this um, Miss Pooler um, to make it happen. But um, it's going to be a great opportunity. Uh, it's great, you know, uh, media uh, information and hype and getting our name out there. And I think the men had done it before. So I'm excited for our opportunity to uh, be afforded an opportunity to participate. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful for the kids. You know, we want to go up and we're going to battle, you know, uh, you know, I can tell you that anytime you have an opportunity to win, uh, you know, against a power five school, you got to hit three, you got to be able to get to the free throw line and you can't turn that thing over. So, um, 
you know, and you got to be able to rebound. So if you can do those things, you have a shot at, you know, uh, the upset. So we're looking forward to it. I think we have the ingredients. I think we have the offense. We just got to make sure that um, we're efficient. And, um, you know, that window is really small when you're playing uh, power fives in terms of what you can do in terms of mistakes. So um, excited about it. I think the uh, SWAC is in, in, in a great uh, situation right now. Uh, Jackson State was phenomenal. You know, I think um, Tamika has done a phenomenal job over there and represented the conference extremely well in the tournament against LSU. Uh, so we're excited about it. Uh, we're excited about competing. You know, that's what this is all about. We're going to get in there and battle. We're going to, um, you know, show up and show out for the purple and gold. So that's what we're, that, that, that's our only focus. Thank you for your candor and honest. Good luck, good luck this season. Thank you. I'm going to try to get in questions uh, quickly. First question goes to Charles Bishop. How's Pete, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Hey, you mentioned your previews of uh, three-point shooting prowess. Uh, in addition to Diana Rosenthal and, and Kennedy Paul, who are in the top 10 at three-point shooting in the swag, but who are some other names that you're looking forward to getting some shots up? Oh, my God. Uh, Destiny Jenkins. Um, every kid on our roster can shoot the three. So, um, you know, a lot of people sleep on uh, big Trinity H H Hudson. She's six four post player, but she shoots it as well as any of the guards. So, um, every kid, you're going to have to guard us from the perimeter. So uh, we're going we're gonna to let it fly. So uh, they can shoot it. They have a lot of confidence in shooting it. Um, and uh, we're going to get it up and down the court quick. So, you know, like, I, you know, Destiny Jenkins is five foot four. You know, we're going to have to go up against six foot five, six foot six. So what's her advantage? She's going to be shooting it at 30. They got to guard her out there. So, uh, <laughs> And, then, and that's our formula. Um, you know, we're going to be playing a lot of the Grinnell system where we're just going to run them in and out. We, we feel like we have a, a lot of combinations. We feel like we have uh, 13, 14 kids that we can rotate in and out. We do have two freshmen, uh, but both of those kids are super, super talented. Uh, one young lady from Winter Haven High School, Kayla Smith, and the other one from Chicago, Jada Bowen. Um, both are left-handed. Both are five, nine and up, and both can shoot the cover off the basketball. So um, I would be a fool to try to bang it on the block. I mean, we're going to we're gonna uh, get out, run, uh, sprint up and down the floor, and, um, you know, let it shoot, let it go, let it fly. So uh, my coach used to always say, shoot it, Luke, or give up your gun. So we're going to let it fly. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure thing. Appreciate that, Coach. All right. Last question goes to Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner, Houston Round Bar View. Do you have a number in mind for three pointers per game? We want to make five three pointers per quarter. So that's our goal to make five three pointers per quarter. And, uh, but we're going to be putting them up at a rapid clip. So um, we feel like the more we can get up, the better opportunity we have to uh, get that number. So like I say, it's going to be a fun brand of basketball. If you if you enjoy watching kids shoot the basketball, you're going to enjoy watching PVMU women's basketball. Is a three point it's, emphasis? I didn't is hear a three you. point emphasis part of the the evolution in women's basketball? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, we're running continuity offense. You know, originated in Europe. <laughs> so, I mean that 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 evolution started about six years ago. Everybody's gone to the continuity. Um, uh, you know, it's almost, you know, the age of the back to the basket post player is, is, is kind of, is really obsolete. Most post players now can, are shooting the three ball. When you watch the Candace Parkers and, um, the WBA and some of these programs, you know, their bigs are out there shooting, um, threes and the, the ability to put it on the floor and, and create opportunities. I mean, it, versatility is a must. And so, um, that's where we are. That's what we recruit, you know. You know, uh, slashers, um, slashers, rebounders, and shooters. That's what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, athletes with size. So um, excited about it. You know, Purview is a very elite institution academically. It's not easy to get in school here. So we have to be extremely selective of uh, the quality of student athlete that we bring here. 
And so I think we've nailed it. I think we hit it out the park with this, this, this group. Uh, I can't say enough about what wonderful young ladies they are. And, um, and, and to me, character is, is a big part of this. You don't wanna just put a team out there on the court. It's important to know that they're representative of that institution. And that's always been a big piece for me uh, in my career that uh, you know I bring in the best kids that are gonna always represent the institution at a high level. So I think we nailed that. And um, you know, I'm just excited to show our fans what we have and um, let them see uh, these kids for the first time. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Coach Pugh, I know we went a little bit over your availability, but we do appreciate your patience with us and good luck this season. Hey guys, y'all take care and stay blessed. Thank you, coach. Next up, we go to Southern University, head coach Funches. I do see that we have coach there with us. Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. How are you all doing? Doing great, coach. Appreciate your patience. I know uh, we went a little bit long on our prior coaches' availability, so we do appreciate your patience with us. Coach, yeah. if you could please uh, start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Southern Jaguars. Well, last year we went 11-7 and seven in the league. I thought, you know, the biggest thing for us was inexperience. Um, but we do return 11 of our uh, 15 players back, uh, have some new additions. Uh, we're going to play the same style of basketball, but hopefully uh, that we are much better, uh, much more efficient offensively. We've always hung our hat on being a defensive team. Uh, we do return both of our top scorers, Amani McWayne and Genovia Johnson. Uh, Raven White, who started at center for us the last uh, couple of years, so she'll be returning also. And we added some nice pieces. So I'm really confident about our team. It's just a matter of getting out there and getting it done. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions for Coach Funches. First question goes to Charles Hallman. Good afternoon, Coach. Charles Hallman from Minnesota Spokes Recorder. How are you today? How are you doing, Charles? Doing fine. I just want to, if you can comment on the new series between uh, the SWAC and the Pac-12 and that you're hosting one of those schools, which is oftentimes you had to go out to their school, a power fire school to play, but this time power fire school is coming to play you at your place can you just speak on that a little bit i think the commissioner and his staff have done a, have, have done a great job and you know getting the institution like oregon coming to southern university this is going to be the highest ranked team to ever come come here and play and we're looking forward to it i mean i think it's going to be big just getting notoriety for our conference our basketball our women's basketball program has gotten a lot better throughout the entire conference and i mean we're ready to play Thank you, Coach. Congratulations and good luck this season. Thank you. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Bill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good How afternoon, Coach Funch. I'm afternoon. doing well. Good to hear from you. Talk a little bit about your roster, if you would, uh, in terms of some more details. Who uh, you have added to it in terms of those that you've been able to recruit, whether it's transfers, transfer portal. Well, I thought we did a, a really good job going out and recruiting uh, based on our need. We needed some more scoring. Uh, out of the seven games we lost in the conference this past year, uh, we were either tied or leading going into the fourth quarter, and we just came up empty on the offensive end a lot of times. So I think we solved that issue. We have uh, Keanu Morgan, who's a transfer from Radford University, uh, Taylor Williams, who we played against at Bethune Cookman. Uh, she's a very good player, and Sky Castro from St. Peter's uh, University. And we added one freshman in uh, Survivor Legends. So she, she's going to provide some help also. But, you know, with that experience that we have, um, we have both our point guards coming back. Uh, Chloe Fleming, she'll be, she'll be returning also. Uh, Ty Metcalf, she started most of the games for us this past year. And, again, like I said, Amani McWayne and Genovia Johnson. Both of them are experienced scorers, and we're looking to, to just get better and play with more continuity. Thank you. One follow-up wanted to ask you, obviously your team's always been tough in regards to how you want them to mirror the image that you want them to play at. Um, are you any different type of wrinkles or added things that you want to see 
uh, done offensively and or defensively on the court? Well, last year we added uh, six new players. And to be honest with you, we were not able to get a lot of offensive things in because, you know, you don't, you don't want to just put sets in and plays in and just, mm -hmm. just run them. You know, you want to have some continuity when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, them getting a lot of experience, those five new young ladies. And then we do, we did add four new young ladies this year, but they are, are transfers. So they have college experience. Um, you know, they play multiple games at the collegiate level, multiple years at the collegiate level, uh, you know, besides Survivor. But everybody else has, has a lot of games under their belt. And I think that that's going to play well for us going down the stretch because we are much farther ahead right now. We had the young ladies here this summer, so had opportunity to do a few things. And we, I think we'll be ready to go when it's time to tip it off. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. This Thank you. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. Coach Rogers, how are you doing? How are you doing, Charles? Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, one of the things you noticed in the box score last year with Southern uh, was the disparity in scoring. And I wanted to ask, is there a go-to person with regards to having the ball late in games this year? Uh, without a doubt for us, it's going to be Genovia Johnson. Uh, she's improved her three-point shot. A lot of people backed off her last year and played her for the, for the drive. But this year, she has really improved her three-point and mid-range jump shooting. But uh, with the game on the line coming down the stretch, without a doubt, she's going to have the ball in her hands. That's sure thing. I appreciate that, Coach. Well. Currently taking questions for Coach Funches with Southern University. Any final questions for Coach? Coach Funches, we sincerely appreciate your time and good luck this season. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, we go to Texas Southern University. And head coach Skeet, I do see coaches logged in. We'll get coaches video camera here momentarily. Good afternoon, coach. How are you guys? Doing great, Coach. And first and foremost, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to join us. We know this is an extremely busy time of year as you get your team prepared for the upcoming season. So we appreciate your time. No problem. Happy to be here. My voice is a little under the weather, so forgive my scratchiness, but we'll make it work. Oh, no problem at all, Coach. We're just happy to have you. Uh, Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Texas Southern Lady Tigers. Um, we, we're going to keep it simple. You know, our, our goal is to be competitive. You know, um, I asked this team when I first met them, what did they want their characteristic to be? And they said they wanted to be competitors. Uh, so that's what our goal is, is to be able to compete with anybody that we, you know, we stand in front of. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We'll now open up for questions for Coach Skeet. First question goes to Charles Hallman. Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon. Charles Harmon, Minnesota Spokesman Recorder, ask if you could want to ask if you could speak on the series that being announced that was announced about the SWAC and the Pac-12, and that you will be playing a team that has a a, 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 a black female head coach as well, and how important or, or how significant that is, especially in these days of you playing against a Power Five school with a black female head coach, as opposed to always playing. HBCUs, and you are always going against black female head coach. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, going against, I think you know, uh, coach, she, she she's doing a phenomenal job down there. Um, our our job is to put a good product out, you know, and not just to be in the room and be around and say, you know, black coach versus black coach, or HBCU versus that. But our goal is to to put a product out that people want to watch and people enjoy. Um, so regardless of the matchup or what issues that come or arise in between, and I think the more that we focus on putting a good game together, it's going to grow the game. And that's really all we want. We want exposure for our kids, we want the opportunity to grow the game, put a good product out there and make sure it's competitive. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your seat, on, on, on look on your season and take care of your throat. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. I appreciate it. Next question goes to Mark Berman. Hey, Coach Keith, how are you? I'm good, how are you? 
So what have been the challenges and the key for you to installing your culture, the way you want to do things in your first year? Um, I don't, I don't know if there were challenges. I don't really believe in, in I don't I can't say challenges. Uh, it's something that I've faced uh, because these kids were hungry and they wanted and they accepted. Um, understanding process, maybe more of a word that I would use or phrase, um, them understanding what it takes. There's no such thing as a bad kid or a bad, like, they, you know, everybody really wants to be good. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to achieve, but the process that it takes to get up the mountain, you know, nobody naturally wants to be lazy. We, we condition ourselves. We have environmental compromises that allow us to do things that are negative to productivity. Um, so, so I think just the inspiration of showing what it takes and so that we weren't like care bears walking on clouds, like we want to win. Well, so does everybody. <laughs> like, what are you going to do different? You know, what will you do different outside of what was done last year in your position? If you don't have a, a goal or a desire to do something different in your position than the person ahead of you, you can't expect a different result. So maybe understanding and having a vision, you know, thank God of laying out the difference of what it actually takes versus saying, okay, start. And then they look around and go, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. We really talked. We called it plugging the gaps this summer. We talked a lot about what it actually took, what it looked like, how different it was, how our motives had to match our goals. You know, because you say you want that, but then, then your motives don't show that. I should be able to see your goals based on the motives, based on what you do. I should be able to, to recognize and that should be able to correlate. Um, and so we talked a lot about that this summer. And so I think the challenge, if we say challenge, will be who sticks to it in the roughest parts. But everybody's bought in right now. So we're, we're, we're in a good place. Thank you, Coach. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's at HBC Sports Lab. How has the transition been thus far? In, in which way transition from what you said, well, like head coach, just come, conference, like just right? coming into the program in terms of uh, meeting your players and getting things moving towards the culture that you want to establish with the program. You know, I've been lucky. I, I think I've always, uh, I've, I've had really good bosses, you know, Katie Meyer down at the University of Miami, Carolyn Keeger, one of my close and dear friends uh, down at Penn State, like, I've already, I've always operated as a head coach and they've allowed me in that space and whatever I had. Uh, so it wasn't a hard transition because I've kind of been building this for a while. Uh, so it was more of a layout. Um, once I established what my goals were and I established what this team's desire was and we were able to be on the same page, things just kind of, I looked up one day and I felt I was ahead, you know, um, now. The process is the process. You can't plant the apples and eat, you, know, you can't plant the seeds and eat the apples overnight. You know, it takes time to grow, you know. Um, so we're in growing stage right. to see how it's going to develop, to make sure we put enough water, to make sure, you know. Um, but but other than that, I'm, I'm really principle-based. I try to take the fluff out of things. You know, I'm, give me 110% or you can't be here. It's like, well, you only have 100. So we're, we're not going to. We're not going to talk about that. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, give me what you to have. compute. Yeah, it's yeah, it don't know, work. We take all of that out. And so we, we, we try to just be principle-based. You know, feed water. Like, the laws of growth, the laws of growth everywhere. In Africa, in Afghanistan, in water, <laughs> sunlight. It's simple. It does you know, we try to take all the complicated analogies and all of this out. Work hard. Be disciplined. Be structured. Come here hungry. I'm not asking for much more. And so they've been able to prescribe to that. And um, and we've been growing. Thank you, Coach. Welcome to the swag. Good luck this evening. Thank you very much. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. Charles, I believe you're on mute. Sorry about that. How are you doing, Coach I'm good. How are you? I wanted to ask, you've been on various staffs uh, uh, and you talked about building this process, but I, I wanted to ask, was there any specific thing that uh, you uh, brought from your experience that you hope to bring to Texas Southern? Everything. Everything. Um, because everything helps you have vision to prepare. 
Um, I, I don't think I left anything. I, you know, one of the the greatest things that uh, my head coach, she was a phenomenal uh, woman. When I was at JUCO, her name was Rooney Scoville. She's a legend in her own right. Um, she she said, it's better to learn the things that you shouldn't do before you learn the things that you should. Um, and so I've had a lot of those opportunities where I've learned things that probably weren't the best things. Um, and, and then I worked backwards from that. So you're creating an environment of safety for these kids. My biggest thing was not to cheat them. So I don't look at it as like conference. It came to a different conference or lower or higher or, you know, it came to like my goal is the kids that say yes, they want to play for me, their experiences are cheated. Now, we might can't fly in a private jet everywhere, but the plane ride that we're on or the bus is going to be filled with joy. It's going to be filled with discipline. It's going to have principle. The experience will not be cheated. So that's what I brought with me more than anything is making sure that all of the wisdom and experiences that I have, I don't cheat their experience. Uh, and a quick follow-up. What type of style uh, are you bringing to the court with this with regards to this Texas Southern team? Well, you know, when you see our style of play, it's going to be interesting because it's kind of how my mind works. Um, we're kind of in and revamp. I think everybody borrows a lot. Having the beauty of being able to play, you know, in the Big East and, you know, the ACC, the Big T and the SEC, you know, I, I, I love the things that I loved about the Big East was their free flow and movement. And I always say, you know, man, we had the best offense in the Big East, maybe not the talent of the kids in the SEC and the ACC, but blending an offense that made you think. So I call my offense, I know people have had like a read and react, but my flux offense is considered feel and flow. And so I'm teaching my kids to think and to move in sync with each other. And so you, you it, it is some type of reaction, but you're flowing together. It's not like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. We're flowing. Anything can happen. Anything can occur. You have, if you have the ability to take your man one-on-one, we can flow and we can move around and we can fill the space in the zone. And so that's really what, you know, I'm teaching them to play basketball in any, in any court, in any aspect, in any style. Okay, sure thing. Appreciate that, Coach. You're welcome. Last question goes to Chris Gardner. Thank you very much, Coach. Steve, how you doing? Chris Gardner, Houston Round Bar Review. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, my question is, how has recruiting gone for you? How is it going for you? And what kind of student athlete are you looking for for your program? Mm. Well, it's a good question. Um, we we kind of got blessed in the sense of we were able just with the transfer portal and everything. I know a lot of people went after those kids who were hot and out there and, you know, the last year grad transfers. And when I sat down with my staff, I said, let's think differently. So we went after the freshmen who weren't getting enough love. So we snuck in and got some really talented kids that probably wouldn't have looked at our level originally. Um, but they were still out there, and we expressed to them what the Tiger Way was and what we we're trying to do in our vision. Um, and so we, we got really lucky in that aspect that we have a very young team but a lot of promise. Uh, so the buildup is going to be great in the future. And as a result of that, we only have two scholarships that we need to replace. So we're taking our time with that. We're not in a huge rush. I think um, winning takes care of recruiting. <laughs> uh, so that's our biggest focus right now is uh, making sure that we, we put a good product out there. Uh, but the kids, the kids, I mean, the Tiger way, you know, anybody that can prescribe to the Tiger way and come in and work hard and have a competitor's mindset, that's what we're looking for. Um, you know, we're replacing some experience, so we've got to have kids that come in and play right away. You know, so we're looking at a, a, a small group of people, um, and, and we'll see how it kind of flows from there. Thank you, Coach. Kurski, we sincerely appreciate your time. Welcome to the conference and good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can't wait to continue to talk to all of you guys. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Next up, we go to Arkansas Pine Bluff. We believe that we have Coach Thornton on the line with us. Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Doing great, Coach. Thank you so much for, for asking, and, and thank you so much for taking some time to join us. We know it's an extremely busy time of year as you get your team prepared for the upcoming season, so we do appreciate your time. Thank you. 
Coach, uh, if you could please start us out with an opening statement previewing the 2022-2023 edition of the Arkansas Pine Bluff Lady Lions. Well, we are really excited um, about the team that we have put together this year. My staff and I work really, really hard um, recruiting and beating up the portal, uh, as I'm sure every coach has said on this team, um, on this uh, call this afternoon. Uh, we have 12 new faces, and it seems like rebuilding uh, this thing every year it has become the trend, but it's really, really exciting. Um, you know, we have transfers from the University of Georgia, Mari Davenport, um, and, and she's highlighted amongst, um, you know, the rest of the young ladies. She's won a USA gold medal, played for the USA team, so we're excited about her. Um, we have uh, Karina Carter, uh, last played at the University of uh, New Mexico. Um, Kariah Beck, a transfer from Memphis. We have uh, Jaleesa Reese, a transfer from Troy University. And, you know, she's been really, really special for those who know basketball about Troy. Um, they're just, they're, they're cut from a different cloth. So she's been setting the standard uh, here every single day. And of course, with the returners that we have, along with a few other transfers, we have two transfers from the University of Arkansas Little Rock, Razia Potter, she was a starter for them. Um, so we're excited, second leading score for them. So we're excited about her being here with us. Um, and then, you know, we have Zay Green returning. Maya Pete uh, is here with us. And Maya did a wonderful job as far as being a post player with a great presence in this league last year. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been warm. It's been fun. Uh, this is my first year that I've ever, uh, since I've been at UAPB, that I've been able to have my whole team here for the summer. So we've had a chance to implement some things early. Uh, we've laid the foundation, the culture, the expectations of the program. Everybody just kind of bought that, bought in over the summer. We had our strength and conditioning coach the whole summer. So we're excited and we're right on target to be where we need to be. Um, it's Coach, we're now going to open it up for questions for Coach Thornton. The first question goes to Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Mia? I'm doing well as well. Last season, we got a little taste of Zay Green. This whole SWAC did her first season winning Newcomer of the Year. Can you talk a little bit about what are you expecting from her this year and how, you know, her being one of the more senior players on this team, how you're kind of looking at her leadership to help pull this team together? Zay is special. Um, you know, I, I said this once before, once we first got her, Zay completely changed the way that my staff and I coached. Um, this kid is, is one who was up at five o'clock in the morning and in the gym at 10 and 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, we like having to take her shoes and lock her out of the locker room because she wants to be in the gym um, at all times with somebody working her out and training her. Um, you know, I'm not sure what it's like to coach a, a professional athlete. I've had a few kids to go and play overseas, but her work ethic is what has separated her from everybody on our team. Um, even now uh, with her doing a lot of training, doing the things that she needs to do uh, academically, um, you know, just working really, really hard. She's, she's excited about being able to return to continue um, in this conference where she left off. Quick follow up to that last season, we saw the first HBCU player get drafted within the WNBA in pretty much 20 years. Do you think Zay can probably keep that streak alive this upcoming season? Uh, I'm not going to say probably. I'm going to say she's definitely going to have a shot at being able to to be um, the next one to be drafted from an HBCU. Uh, Zay has two years of eligibility left. So, you know, she wants to make sure when it is time for her to leave UAPB that she's playing at, at the peak of, of, of her career. So it's not 100% um, guaranteed that she's just gonna graduate and leave. She very well may do just like um, Amisha and say that additional year to make sure that she's trained and have herself where she wants to be um, to make sure that she can continue to stay on the roster for sure. Sorry, coach. I didn't. I thought she only had one year. I wasn't familiar with the two. Apologize for that. Thank no you. No problem. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Coach Thornton, good to have you this afternoon. Thank you. Wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, what it means to have, have your team in early. Does that allow you uh, above 
setting in that culture early as you talk about it, does it allow you to do some more wrinkles with your offense or defensive side of the ball, being able to start that early? You know, it's, 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 it is, that is a part of it, um, but it's kind of bigger than that also, because last year throughout conference, after we played, well, to start conference off last year, we had COVID. We had several kids with COVID and our uh, newcomer of the year, the previous season, Khadijah Brown, tore her ACL right before we got ready to play Jackson at home. And I thought that that would have been a great matchup. So we never really and truly had our entire team for the duration of the season. Um, and I thought that we had a pretty good team, a good solid team last year. Having a team to be here in the summer gives you an opportunity not only to build that chemistry, to implement your offensive defensive principles, but it also allows you time to get stronger. Um, you're in the weight room. Our strength and conditioning coach that we have is phenomenal. And so I think that that was something that was the main piece was making sure that our athletes are as strong as they possibly can be and they're in the best playing condition. And that was what, what was most important in the highlight, I think, of the summer, you know, just getting reps up, getting in the gym, getting shots up. That's a part of it. But being strong because basketball season is such a long season, we want to be able to endure those runs late in February and in, in early March. A little bit more about that in terms of your overall team framework. You talk about adding more, more talent um, with talent that you already have. Does, does that depth help in terms of uh, what do you want to get done on the basketball court? I thought that um, one thing we wanted to improve on was making sure that we could bring depth in every possession, in every position. But we also wanted to make sure that we didn't limit our players. So we wanted to make sure that we have point guards that can run the two, that can run the three. We have guards that can run the four. You know, Mari Davenport, six four kid, transfer from UGA. We have her at the four. So you know, we we are in a position now to where um, our young ladies can play multiple positions. I thought that last year, you know, we had a designated person running a designated spot every single time. If you remember Zay Green's game, Zay ran the point four and she yeah. went playing all play one through four for us we have multiple players now on the team that can play one through four one through three and that's something that has really and truly helped improve um our overall our overall team morale like that's just something that it becomes natural you hear more questions in practice now like well coach can I do this and can I do that and and we want to make sure that we keep them off the leash and and to be able to create just as we did with Zay Thank you, Coach. Look forward to the season. Thank you. Well, Storm, one question that I had is it was just your non-conference schedule. If you can touch on a few of your conference games and maybe just touch on your scheduling philosophy as a whole. Um, I think you're it was breaking up a little bit. Did you want me to talk about my my preseason schedule? Yes, if you could discuss your non-conference schedule and then just kind of uh, give okay. some insight as far as your schedule. Yes, absolutely. We open up November the 7th here hosting the Arkansas Razorbacks um, and we anticipating that to sell out. That's going to be a great, um, a great opportunity for us to start our season off, uh, you know, playing coach neighbors and the Razorbacks. They do a phenomenal job every year in the SEC, making a deep run uh, in that league. So I think that we wanted to start off early. Um, you know, we would say like kind of getting punched in the mouth, but we wanted to make sure um, that we can see the fruit of our labor from how hard we've been working in the preseason early. Um, right after that, you know, we one thing that we wanted to make sure we were intentional about is showcasing our talent throughout the state of Arkansas. So once we finish playing the Razorbacks, we'll go over to, to Euler, Arkansas Little Rock. We'll return and play them. Um, and we have a home game here with Philander. And then we'll go back to the Miami tournament that we played in last year. I think the highlight of that tournament was we beat Tulane last year uh, and played Miami very closely also. So I thought that that's something that we kind of feel like the girls feel like we had some unfinished business uh, in Coral Gables. So we're going to head back to Miami and play them again. And, and then SMU will go to Dallas at the end of November uh, before we go to, the, to um, uh, California. We're playing a, a tournament in California. Uh, and we got, uh, I believe, it's San Francisco after that. And then we'll play Central Arkansas and wrap up uh, around the 19th of December. We'll take another question from Charles Bishop. How you doing, Coach Thor? I'm good. How are you? 
Uh, I wanted to uh, ask, uh, your team last year really matched up well with eventual uh, SWAC champion Jackson State, but I wanted to ask with the additions of, of Maurer Davenport and, and, and uh, another year for Zay Green, uh, do you think you guys have uh, the, the talent to, to, to uh, go all the way this year? Well, I thought that if you'd asked me the same question last year, I would have said that I thought that we had the talent to do the same last year. We, Like I said before, we just weren't healthy. We didn't have... Um, our post player was averaging a double-double for us. So having depth, not just with Mari Davenport, we also have uh, Briasia Robertson, um, a transfer from Delaware State. And we also have Azaria Robertson, a transfer post player from Euler, who also played for New Mexico along with Karina Carter. So we definitely have um, a good solid four, you know, kids, six, three, six, four, six, five. And Maya Pete has done, done a phenomenal job. Maya, uh, by far, is one of my hardest working post players. And she's been dominating in practice and doing what she needs to do to be the best every single day. You know, she's continuing to, to take care of her body and do what's right and, and working hard. And, and so I definitely think that we match up very well with a lot of teams in the conference that, that we've struggled with. So adding depth it has been something that I think that has been a spotlight for us this, this season. Good thing. Appreciate that, Coach. Coach Thornton, I know we've gone a little bit over your availability, so we definitely appreciate your patience with us. Uh, with that being said, Coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck this season. Thank you.